Oh my gosh, Bill Molino here with Bill's History World with Goober the Traveling Bear and Kevin and we are in Kinston, North Carolina and we are at the CSS News 2 Museum. This is a full-scale replica, been here before. This is another video and Goober and Kevin are quite impressed. Let's go on inside. Good afternoon, sir. We're going to go and visit the CSS News 2. Well, you're welcome. Um, the officer on watch is, I'm, I'm just coming off watch. Um, and I have some other tasks, to, some errands to do around here, but uh, go on up. All right. This is the only full scale uh, replica of an ironclad that you can actually walk around inside. Oh. The Yankees have, a, have a, a full scale replica of the monitor, but you can't go in it. Been there. Yes. Well, thank you, Been sir. Been there and not done that. That's but right. you can go in this one. <laughs> The key to this is that the museum across the street, of course, has the original bottom part of the hall and some artifacts. This gives you a, a full 360 sense of what it was like. It's a decent replica, and you'll get a real, a real feeling for, for what the, what the uh, crew went through and uh, uh, the, the, just the general size of it and the, and the, and the sense of it. Um, it's excellent. You can walk around inside, do anything you like, climb on stuff. You know, it's, it's uh, school groups love it. Thank you. Well, we are at the CSS News 2, and we are with Mr. Mike Parker, correct? Yes. Well, we are giving a donation to the Goober Fund of $60 to help them with their cause. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say, Mr. Mike? And we appreciate everything you're doing for us, and especially with the work that you're doing with the Battle of Wise Fork. All right. Well, we're going to do a little videos and uh, we'll be back to touch base with you when we're done. All righty. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to go down into the... Now, this is my second video of the news, so we'll see what we can do. So, I got Kevin with me, and uh, Goober's checking things out. So, Goober, uh, there's the boiler for the engine. And then, Kevin, why don't you take the lead? We'll follow you. Right, mm. Last time, it was two years ago, I was here with Josh, so. Uh, here's the fan. Not, not really know, people know the news have the fan. Oh, what do we have this way? So, coal bin. No, this, <laughs> this whole space wouldn't have been filled with coal. I don't know. We'll follow Kevin. So if you see two creepy twins at the end of this, let me know. <laughs> so here's it's the galley. Here's the galley. We have a small stove here. Ah, we've seen the original. We saw the original next door. All right. That's the cruise quarters. And there's one of the hatches up. And again, this is an ironclad, a gunboat, not, not a submarine. But we would actually be underwater if we were. There would not be room for many crewmen in here. No. The crew lived on shore. Yes. Almost all the time. They would only have a skeleton crew on board, I imagine. Yeah. All right. Now, let's walk along this way. Now there are other tourists here, so we'll turn off the camera here. All right. Here's the tool room. Okay. And Kevin's inspecting the drill press, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting. Josh did that same exact thing with Goober before. <laughs> We're following Kevin further into the ship's hold, and he's taking a left. All right. Now, th this ship is pretty big. 
officers' quarters. This you is, can see how much more spacious they are. <laughs> so they're much more spacious. Oh yeah. And uh, we could uh, Goober would he would fit fine in that bed. Oh yeah. He could do it. Just uh, now the temperature here is pretty nice Great. at this level. Yeah. However, in the casemate, it was quite warm. I imagine under steam, with that old boiler boiling away, it would be quite warm. All right, now let's head this way. And Kevin, is that a, this is the captain's cabin. Oh, well, here we are at the captain's cabin. Wilbur King Jr. and Will King, oh no, it's, it's dedicated memory. That's All not right. Me. That's not they represent, no. So, this is where the captain's quarters would be. Sure. We are now in the powder magazine. This is where the powder would so be stored. They would have had uh, barrels of powder, I guess, on there. I don't know. All right, we're following Kevin through the CSS News 2. The projectile room. The projectile room. And here we have the Brook rifles were maintained in this space. The Brook 6.4. They had solid 92 pound armor piercing bolts. More typically, they use a 32 pound Brook Moulin or Reed exploding shells, as I said. And a, brook, a fragment of Brook shell was discovered a mile and a half from the river, suggesting the range okay. of the Brook rifles. So the noose ordnance consisted of grape shot, explosive projectiles, stand of canister, stand of grape, explosive projectile. And armor punching bolts. Mm -hmm. And armor punching bolts? So Kevin, uh, where are we now? Uh, I'm guessing, but I'm guessing that it is uh, an extension of the magazine next door. Uh, it has the same kind of uh, what I thought were bunks, but I think now perhaps our racks were holding a particular kind of shell. Okay, and what's what's around the corner here, Goober? Darkness. Darkness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It is dark, and wow. Um, we'll head on up again. Yeah. So, one thing I noticed, Kevin, is we have a secondary hatch here. Yes. I don't know where it goes. The deck. It goes to the hatch. deck. Yeah. So there's one forward and one aft. Is that an escape hatch, I would suspect? Uh, an escape hatch. So, Gibber likes chicken and chicken dinner, but this is a little raw for him. And uh, this is in the news. So, Kevin is climbing in the wheelhouse, <laughs> which is. So, there's Kevin Man in the wheelhouse. Kevin, uh, how, how can you see out there? I don't think this is built for me. I can't see anything. <laughs> I think there are places here that Yay! would be sight vents in all four directions. Okay, so there are sight vents and... and but they are not actually open to see out there. All right. They have plexiglass over the... O o over the venting. Very good. So, to, uh, my viewers want to see you come down the ladder, so let me move my camera around. want to see me come down the ladder, too. All right, everyone, let's watch Kevin descent from the ladder. Here he comes. All right, you, you, you got to laugh. Look at him. He, he, he's doing it. Might give you something to laugh about. All right, Kevin did it. Holy cow. That's straight up and down, not me. All right, so we are in we are in the bow yes. of the noose, and our 6.4 Brook rifle gun could pivot one, two, three, four, and five portholes, and there'd be another one in the aft, and so they only had two guns that could fire at a time. But they could get two gun broadsides or one gun forward and one, one gun, gun aft. aft. Let's go around the other side. So, okay. Now, 
Now here we have Goober the traveling bear, and here they have they have the powder and the Brook rifle ammunition and the gun deck. And Kevin, this gun I've been told takes over 20 people to operate this between running the the. And I'm wondering the, how they get the ammunition up to here. The magazine's below deck. I don't see any uh, opening. I presume they're carrying it up through the staircase, but we can ask oh, Mr. Oh. Mike. All right, so we're going to ask Mr. Mike some questions. We have a couple questions for you, Mr. Mike. Uh, Kevin, what are your questions? <coughs> well, uh, first, uh, how many personnel were needed to actually crew the gun? 24. 24. Yes. And what was 24. the total complement of the, of the news? The total complement, they had a full complement, was 120. But they never had more than 80 to 90. A lot of people come on board and they see all this room and they say, oh man, there's lot. this is a spacious thing. Uh, not when you put 120 men on it. Not even when you put 80 to 90, which was how many was really on it. But there was a gun there, 24 people. There was a gun here, 24 people. By the time you got through, there were 50 on the gun deck, yeah. and they drilled the gun crews four to five hours a day, mm. so they would be proficient at using these guns. These are both 6.4 inch Brooks rifle can cannon. Kevin, what was your other question? Well, I was wondering, the, the magazine is underneath the forward gun from walking around on it. Mm -hmm. How did they get the shells up here? I didn't see any access door or anything. Did they there was, carry there's the access, They think they had a dumb waiter that okay. brought them up. Okay. And it was over there like on the port and in starboard side, either one of those, there was a an opening where they could bring them up. That's what but, I would have thought. They must have had something. They weren't carrying them up no, the oh stairs no. individually. No, we see, first of all, there were no stairs. Ah, well, good point, yes. Because this was, there was hatches port and starboard with ladders. Yeah. And what they would do is they would fill the, the powder bags and the shells and get them ready and they would bring them up. You'll notice the gray box back there, that's called a pass box. Okay. And that's where they put the powder. Right. Because you didn't want to take a chance on any fire getting no, quit. No, no, no. <laughs> I tell people all the time because we have a 10 pound powder charge over there. But it's not really black powder because if it were, I would not be within yeah. four blocks of this no, thing. No, no. Uh, it's kitty litter. Cause <laughs> the kitty litters are about, got about the same weight and volume yeah. as black powder. Uh, so anyway, they had they had a, a few boys on board that were called powder monkeys. Yeah. And what they did is they carried the powder bags to the dumb waiters to bring them up here, and they did the same thing with the shells. But the shells. General, the general shell they used weighed 32 pounds. It was cast iron with a hollow part inside where they would fill with black powder so it would be exp it would explode upon impact. Right. So it was basically an anti-personnel round. Okay. And they found anti they found fragments of those shells a mile and a half from the Noose River. I read that. Yeah. That's so they determined right. the range of the weapon. Yeah. yeah. Now that same gun on dry land would fire three to four miles. But see, they couldn't get, they can't get, get the so elevation. much elevation. Okay. Um, Kevin, do you have any other questions for Mr. Mike, who's extremely knowledgeable? The no, I just, it must have been uh, a dog's life in the Confederate Navy. Uh, down there. Down there. Yeah. Well, 130 degrees in the engine room. and uh, We'll close this out. We have more tourists coming on board. Mr. Mike's very busy today. Thank you, sir, for all you do for history. Well, thank you. I appreciate you visiting. Everybody wants to come. Come on. All right. And we're in Kinston, North Carolina. Stay safe, be kind, and be courteous, and visit the CSS News 2. And it's really cool to visit this site.